to Heroes Mark Homeschool Academy. My name is Mrs. Anita. Let's begin with a word of prayer. We thank you, Lord, for this time we have to learn and grow. We seek to do the best we can and add to what we know. We love you, God, with all our hearts and to others love we show. Pleasing you is our goal. Now to our lesson, we shall go. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, it's so good to have you back. This is Lesson 34B. And I welcome you. So good to have you. Let's begin with our warm-up song. Are you ready to warm up? I am ready to warm up. Let's let go sing our song. It helps us to get ready for the lesson ahead of us. If you're ready to learn, clap your hands. If you're ready to learn, stamp your feet. If you're ready to learn, if you're ready to learn, then come and sing with me. If you're ready to learn, clap your hands. Clap, clap. Ready to learn, step your feet, bum bum. If you're ready to learn, if you're ready to learn, then come along with me. Yay! We are ready to learn, we are ready to go. Good stuff. So let's begin by talking about our CVC words again. We talked about CVC. C means consonants, V, vowel, and C is consonant. That means that you're going to sandwich a vowel in between two consonant letters to form a word. So you, that's what we've been doing. We've been working on CVC words quite extensively over the last few, several uh, lessons and weeks. But it's really uh, good to know how to write these words so that you can use them in your own writing. And it's a lot of fun. The uh, short vowel sound we'll be working with today is eh, eh. So be sure to circle that on the top. You see that border? Circle that in your workbook. We're on page seven. So let's go ahead and begin by writing some CVC words. Let's start. So the very first image you see is that of a hen. N. 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 What is the very first sound we hear? Do you remember what letter makes that sound? The letter A, yes. It is the voiceless letter. Okay, so we have, and we also have N, N. Well, we know there's going to be an E because our, our vowel of the day is E. N, N. Do you hear the N? You know what letter makes the N sound? N. N, N is correct. N, N, hen. And also keep in mind that our word families here, do you remember talking about word families? Yes, we spent quite a bit of time on that. Hen, N, hen. That's how you spell the word hen. Good job. Be sure to write this down in your workbook as we're going along. The next image we see is, ah, a married couple, they are newly wed. W ed. W ed. W ed. Can you hear those sounds? Yes, those phonemes are coming together to make the word wed. W, w ed. Wed. So let's write this down. We have w, that's the first sound. What letter is that? W, w, w. W is correct. W. W, and then we have eh, d, eh, d, eh, 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 e, and d, 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 d. Good job. Wed. Wed, and there's another word family here. Now we talked about in the past, ed, ed, wed. Good job. Let's see, what is the next picture of? The next picture is that of a jet. Jet, 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 jet. Can you hear those individual sounds? Jet, jet, jet. So let's write that out. The first letter I hear is j, j, j. Yes, j. And after j, I hear e, t, e, t, e, e, e. And t, 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 good job. 
So we have jet, jet. And the word family that's here is et. Do you remember the et word family? Et. And we've talked in the past, but you, when you're using these words in your own writing, just change out that initial consonant letter and form new words based on that. And we've gone over rhyming words that you can use to assist you in that effort in previous lessons, which you can locate in previous workbooks. Go back to your portfolio, look up those words. The section was titled Rhyme Time, and you'll find a host of different rhyming words you can use and when you're writing in your own journals and when you're writing in your my journal um, uh, journal time section in your workbook you can do the same exact thing there if you need a few more moments to complete this exercise press pause on your device you can do that at this time great work well i trust you had time to do that it is now the number of the day Time portion of the day we want to practice our handwriting a little bit more we've been writing our numbers up to from the number zero up to the number 19 at this point um, we will conclude with 19 today and then the next lesson we'll pick up with 20 and we're just becoming more familiar with bringing these two numerals together you know bringing one numeral another numeral bringing them together and forming a brand new number and the number we're going to be writing is 19 you can find this on page 10 in your workbook let us begin. So we're going to write the number 19. That's one, go straight down. And then nine, and nine, you have a circle here. And then you can go right back over that line, straight down, 19. Let's try that again. We have the number one and the number nine. Up, straight down, 19. Let's try that one more time. We have the number one, and then we have the number nine. Just go ahead and do your circle form, and it goes straight down, and there's 19. Good job, way to go. Let's also work on the spelling as well. We wanna make sure we can identify the spelling of this number, um, if, especially if for emergency purposes or something like that. We need to know how to spell 19 in case we need to use it. And not even necessarily spell it, but we'll need to know how to read it. Say, ah, I remember N-I-N-E, blah, blah, blah. We want to be able to do that. So let's start with the letter N. Line down. Upward curve over. There's N. I, just next to the N. And you'll continue to make your other N an E. There's 9. Then you want T. There's the T. Or T. E, E for T, and then you have N, T, N, I'm T, N, I'm T, 19 is the word. Let's try that again. I'm going to write the number 19. We're going to start with the line down, curve over. We have an I, and then another N just next to the I. E, T is just next to the E, an E and another E for the E sound, and then N, 1919. Good job, way to go. If you need more time to work on this, uh, that's perfectly acceptable. Go ahead and press pause on your device and return when you're ready to continue. Great work. Well, I trust you had time to do that if you needed to do so. We are now in our Bible journey segment of the lesson. It's a phenomenal time of the lesson where we're able to um, go into our history and find out more about God, more about the qualities that make him God, uh, the way he wants us to be so that we can reflect him. We've talked about several different things. We've even gone over prayers that we can adopt and um, use in our own lives. Um, we talked about several things. In today's lesson, we're going to be continuing with talking about the days of creation. We talked about day one. What happened on day one? What did God do when he first started to recreate the planet, the earth as we know it? What happened on day two? 
what did God do on day two? Then we talked about day three in the previous lesson. And today we're going to be reading a small story about the, about day four. You can um, turn to page eight if you like and follow along. I think there's a coloring exercise for this story. Great, so we're still reading in our Bible and we have the fourth day, it says, on day four, God put the sun in the sky to warm the earth. He saw that the night was very dark. So God put the moon and the stars in the sky. Then God made spring, summer, fall, and winter. All that he made was good. And then here at the bottom it says, next God made flippy, floppy, fun things. Let's see what they were. So in the next lesson, we'll go over and find out what those flippy, floppy things are. What's flippy and floppy? But in today's lesson, we talked about God making the sun for the daytime, the sun and the moon and stars to guide the night. We talked about God making the seasons on day four spring, summer, fall, winter, those seasons that we get to enjoy all year round. God made those on day four. He made the four seasons on day four, along with the um, stars and sky as well. So at this time, if you like, you may continue um, to color your worksheet there. And when you're ready to continue, press play and we will pick up what we left off. Great work, I'm glad you had time to do that. I um, wanted to note that page 11 is there as well. Make time to practice writing those words and filling in the blanks there. We are now on to our skip counting in our mathematics portion of the lesson. We've been skip counting. Um, we started skip counting in the last lesson and we skipped counting from 10 to 100. <gasps> Way to go, good job. In this lesson, we are going to um, re return to our board and practice skip counting again by tens. And I hope that the smart craft um, activity you had in your workbook aided you in being um, more proficient in counting by tens, counting out those individual units and then counting by tens subsequently will help lock into your memory how to count by tens and you'll know what it is you're doing. This is an alternative way to count to 100 by tens as well by reviewing the sequence and seeing that this sequence never fails. The 10 is going to come after the nine. Uh, it's always going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then 10. And then when you count, forward by 10, you're going to get to the next multiple of 10. So when you say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, we just count it to 10. And then when you go through and count these squares, you're going to add 10 more units. So that's why we go from 10 to 20. When you count these squares here, you'll find that there are 10 squares. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There are ten squares in each one of these rows. Ten, ten, ten. And that's why we can count by ten. The same thing with the beans or lentils or some small uh, manipulative that you chose for your craft in the previous lesson. When you counted out those 10, you found that, oh, after nine comes 10, and after 19 comes 20, 10, 20. And so I want that connection to be made um, between these two are 10 more units. So plus 10, and between the next two, between the 20 and the 30, come 10 more units. You count 10 more times. Um, 
count up to 10. So that's what we've been doing. And uh, we're going to say these numbers out loud, counting by 10 all the way up to 100. Are you ready to go? Yay! And if for any reason you can't see this chart very well, it's in your workbook on page 13. And you can reference that. Okay, here we go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Yay! Let's try that one more time. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Way to go. Give yourself a round of applause. You did it. You counted to 100 by 10s. And um, you can do that as often as you like and as often as you find it necessary to do. On page 14, you um, can, if you like, you can take time to complete that exercise and return when you're ready to continue. Good work. Well, I trust you had time to do that. We are going to be uh, making a joyful noise to the Lord now. We have been singing Go Tell It on the Mountain. It's the song of the week. You can find the lyrics on page 30 if you have the workbook. Um, go ahead at this time, find your instrument of choice, whatever it may be. Bring it out and we're going to praise God together. Great work. So we are ready. Are you ready to sing? Me too. Here we go. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. When I was a seeker, I saw both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and he showed me the way. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. When I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me, and he showed me the way. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain, that Jesus Christ is born. Yay! So go tell it on the mountain, that's a um, song that um, was written with the... Um, backdrop of the nativity and when Jesus was born he said go tell it to everyone Jesus Christ the son of God is born he's here and um so shepherds and why it was shepherds in particular they were watching and guarding sheep and they wanted to just tell it to everyone anyone who would hear and so they said go tell it on the mountain that's where the sun comes from well it is time for our basic skills um, section of our workbook. You can find this in, on page 17. We're, we've been talking about our body. It was said, what, what, what is this body that God has given me? I understand that he wants me to um, use this body for his glory, but what's, what's here? What do I have? So in the previous lesson, we talked about our head. That's right. We talked about our head. Then we talked about the different parts on our head. We talked about the hair and the ears and the eyes. And um, in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the part that attaches or connects the head to the rest of the body. The part that attaches this part to the rest of our body. Do you know what that part's called? The neck. Yes. We're talking about the neck. We need this part of our body to connect this to the rest of us. We call it the neck. So I just have this little exercise I wanted you to do. Tilt your head this way. 
and then tilt your head this way. And then tilt your head back this way. Can you feel your neck? It is moving from side to side. And now if you like, you can rotate your neck all the way around. Whoa. We're doing a rotation of our neck. Whoa. And it feels really good. Whoa. We just experienced uh, our neck and uh, movements of our neck. Our neck is responsible for a lot. It has to carry this big thing around all day long. And so we're grateful for our necks. And um, the neck also protects the vocal cords and, and helps us to swallow when you start talking about the throat. And there's a lot that goes into the neck. But just on the outside, this neck is really helpful because it is required to carry this around with your body. Imagine if you didn't have a neck. Well, let me start to imagine here, your head would be sitting on top of your shoulders. So we, we thank God for a neck, is that right? Great, so if you want, you may take time to review the content on uh, page 17, a little bit further um, after the lesson. But it has been a really great time with you. We've concluded lesson 34B. Oh, we're just moving along. You've had a great time, a great uh, year with you. I've just had a really wonderful time and I thank God for you often. But until next time, goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye and may God bless you. Goodbye, goodbye. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and may God bless you. Goodbye, little heroes. I'll be your hero's body, and as you study with heroes born.